Welcome back to the TSL round of eight, day number one. Here we are in series number two, game number two, spawning in the six o'clock. The legend killer himself, Prey Thorzane, as the Blue Terran. His opponent, two-time GSL champion, in the nine o'clock as the Red Protoss OGSMC. And I tell you what, Chill, I was just talking during that little uh, commercial break we had for everyone. MC has been so thoroughly outplayed in that game. I am sitting here. I'm like Marine King who? I'm like, I'm MVP. <laughs> no, you're not, dude. Pray, pray Thorzane is MVP in my heart. This kid, an unbelievable Terran. Mm. And suddenly I feel like MC is the underdog. And how could I ever say that about <laughs> MC? Know. Yeah, just a ridiculous display of skill, and, and after this match is over, if there isn't a Thorzane fan club and 10,000 members, I'm going to have to start banning some nerds. As we see Thorzane very nicely pairing up his uh, SCVs there at the 6 o'clock, MC meanwhile chrono boosting out some early probes, going to drop that gateway and proceed to scout as standard. Yeah, and by the way, when uh, you guys make that fan club for Thorazane, I'm sure someone's doing it right now. Like, there's going to be eight of them. You guys have close seven of them. Um, <laughs> please make sure you put an exclamation point at the end. I feel so bad when I see, like, TLO fan club with a big exclamation point, and then Idra fan club with nothing. It's like, oh, you guys aren't that excited. But Thorazane <laughs> deserves all of yes. your excitement because this kid is, like, actually so legit. Like, I know I talk about Clyde a lot, but, like, Thorazane, oh, my God. God, man. Total, total package, as you were saying earlier. Yeah, and we see his SCV taking the full tour, checking for any sort of cheese going on at that gold before touching the Zelnaga and then just running up. Or Zelnaga, I got a lot of feedback that my Zelnaga is not appreciated. As we see that SCV strolling around to the 9 o'clock, going to go into the main base of OGSMC. Going to see that everything looks fairly standard. Only one single assimilator thus far as MC waits for that cybernetic score to finish up. Indeed he does, and getting a second gas, there he goes. So I'm really interested to see what this will be. I would not be surprised after that game, if I was MC, I'd be like, okay, it's time to bust out some Void Ray builds, because uh, <laughs> I do not want to go in a long game against Thorazine. When he like out macros you after saving like every mule for scans, and then out micros you, and by the way, has better upgrades as well, uh, that's... That's time to bring out, in my opinion, the Void Ray build. So I would not be surprised if after this SCV dies, that is exactly what MC does. So Thorzane popping some guys in and out of gas, just enough to make that first Marauder. Now he's going to take his SCV over and drop that expansion, very quick expansion as he starts to look around with his Marine. Wants to track down this probe so that, so that MC does not relay any information back to home base. But there it is, now well aware of this expansion coming up. And the, the SCV is actually still alive in uh, MC's main base. Now he's rallied that stalker over to the smoke, so gonna be able to take this SCV out. Before dropping his tech, Thorzane going for one more tour. The last hurrah, looking for any sort of tech, but he's not gonna find it. No, he is not, but now it is time for MC to show us what his plan was. So and look smart. at that, it's a Stargate. Oh, thanks, chill, go on. <laughs> That's it. No, it's, uh, it's, it's a smart move, man. I mean, right now, uh, especially on the Korean server, there are a few Void Ray builds that are absolutely downright scary against Terran. A lot of people haven't figured out the exact counters. Uh, and off of a Marauder expansion into kind of some slow barracks and semi-tech, one of these heavy Void Ray builds may be exactly what MC needs to get back into this series. Yeah, we can see Stim has been started, but it's still a ways away as the second barracks about to complete. But the one thing in uh, Thorzane's favor is he is making a lot of Marines. He's got only a single Marauder here, uh, three Marines out and two more in production. So that's really going to help him as uh, this orbital command starts up. And MC getting aggressive. He's going to push forward, put a little bit of pressure on this bunker, but he's probably going to want to get out of there pretty quickly. Void Ray, Void Ray being chrono boosted now as he moves forward, and there's no probe for a forward pylon. Actually, MC dropping an expansion, so he is going to be able to transition out of this. Yeah, that's interesting. Some uh, light Void Ray uh, harassment may be coming up here, and hmm. you know, when someone goes for a Marauder expansion, they're not going to have quite as many Marines, so definitely could do some nice light harassment, but I don't expect to see this Void Ray with a whole lot of kills. MC is not uh, really going to follow this up with too strong a punch right away, but he is making another Void Ray, which we do not always see, but that is fully charged now. He's going to have to bring a lot of Marines up there, and 
does have to cancel that barracks, so that's going to throw slow him down quite a bit. Some very nice harassment thus far from from MC. Yeah, MC not trying to kill him here, just doing some harassment, and it is working very well. Thorzane still a little bit away from getting that stim pack done, as it's at about 150 of 170. MC transitioning into the second gateway, chrono boosting out more void race, so he's got two out and still chronoing out a third. So this is not something that he's going to transition out of quickly. He's going to continue with these void rays. I'm going to be interested to see if he does some sort of uh, early mid-game push here, or if he just wants to have them out on the map doing harassment over and over as he cancels another deep. Well, you know what's really interesting, Chill? You know what Void Rays really combo well with? Is that rhetorical, or should I answer No, that? I'm asking if you know, man. That's all. I don't <laughs> but, know. Uh, the answer is they combo well with everything, Chill. I mean, <laughs> if you actually just have a bunch of Void Rays with a gateway army, you would be surprised. You know, you force field stuff up, suddenly most of the Marines are not hitting the Void Rays, they fully charge. And then you still have a bunch of gateway units left when those those uh, force fields go off. It's pretty scary, especially with some of this these new tactics, such as putting a gateway near your opponent. You charge that gate the uh, void rays up on the gateway before right. going in. And I mean, he just keeps making void rays. So I could definitely see a, just a very strong void ray gateway attack coming up in uh, the mid game. You know, we've been focused so much on MC, I want to point out that Thorzane has not missed a beat. He hasn't let his macro slip, he's got the engineering bay up, he's actually got plus one attack completed already at the nine minute mark for his Terran troops, and uh, plus one armor now started with combat shields, about 75% done, and he's starting to push out with a, what looks to be a scary force. Stim is complete and combat shields is going to complete for this timing. Pretty big deal that he took out that Void Ray as well. The Void Ray is coming down to help hold off this attack. Uh, you know, Thorzane has thrown up some very smart missile turrets to slow down any Void Ray harassment. And uh, this army of MC, it doesn't have like a lot of hit points. It only has three Zealots in it. But if his force fields are just right with those four Void Rays, he should be able to hold here. Yeah, Thorzane stimming to run forward and scout. Looks like he wants to commit to this attack. Force fields lock him in place as the Void Rays go to work the stim. Oh my god, Force fields completely lock him in as Thorzane raining tear down with that plus one. He may have enough DPS, but no, he's going to run out and start to go to work on the probes. So that is something he can mitigate out with the remaining units of, uh, of, uh, that somewhat failed attack. It looks like he's at 67 supply, Protoss at 61, and MC with a powerful counter push running down the streets of Metalopolis. <laughs> yes, he is indeed. It's it's quite a nice gang that he has here. He's got the void rays floating over the top, and you know, as I was saying, that it's you force fill up a few times, man, and those void rays can do quite a number on just about any army. Uh, they of course do have longer range than uh, marines, so you just kind of sandwich the marines in a force field. They can't move, and the void rays are like, LOL, and they just kind of kill them. Uh, and here we go. A nice little attack by MC. It does not lose that void ray. That's something very important. You cannot be using Void Rays at this point in the game. Yeah, this is really annoying to Thorzine that MC can camp uh, his Stalkers on the bottom ground and use the, the high ground vision of the Void Rays to go to work on the barracks. We can see Thorzine struggling a little bit as this barracks is getting targeted. The Void Rays go into high damage mode as they get charged up. Now going back to work on that barracks and Thorzine getting picked apart just a little bit here in the mid game. Now forced to lift and get that barracks back to a safer position, but he cannot as it's focused down by that void ray. You know, this is actually such great play by MC, but again, you know, we're focusing so much on MC because he's being such an active player here, but Thorzane is on top of everything. He's getting his armory, and he has two star ports up at his natural. Beautiful force fields going off by MC, but Thorzane with a beautiful stim as well, taking down at least one void ray. The Vikings coming out now, and those void rays are not going to be nearly as scary, and those Vikings are going to have just a ton of uses because MC has gotten his robotics facility in fact making an immortal now and throwing up a twilight council realizing uh oh vikings counter everything I have I probably shouldn't go colossus and look at the main base a lot of activity for OGS MC he's got his twilight council on the way got two more or excuse me three more gateways also on the way uh, Thorzane has completed 1-1 one, one, has that armory up and double ebay's researching plus two Plus two, OGS MC does not have a forge on the ground, so he may fall victim to that same 2-2 two -two push if he cannot get a lot of work done here. Supplies favoring MC by about 10 as he looks to expand and take the top left base. Now here's the thing about those supplies, and I mean that's a pretty big deal that it's, it's 
favoring by 10, but at the same time, Thorzane, as you were just saying, his upgrades are just, they're awesome. And when he hits that 2-2, if MC doesn't have any upgrades, we're going to see it like last game where, you know, no matter what units MC has, Thorazane's just like, well, I mean, mine are worth so much more than yours right now. I have those 2-2 upgrades, and I can cut through them like a katana through butter. And I like that MC is running back to his main base as the medevacs start coming out for Thorazane. Uh, with MC sitting around Thorazane's gold base, had Thorazane loaded up two medevacs and dropped in the main base, while a, a production cooldown cycle was on the warp gates, it would have took a lot of time for MC to get back, so he doesn't want to deal with that situation. And Thorazane responding accordingly, dropping a command center at his third base, going to be a little bit behind on finishing that up. Uh, he was actually behind in the harvesters, but MC has remedied that. We're looking at 61 for Protoss, 57 uh, for a Terran player, so about even thus far. You know, I do... Finally, I have finally found a criticism for Thorzane. I've been trying so hard to find some sort of flaw so that I wouldn't fall just completely in love with his play. And that is the fact that he is continually making Vikings. He has so many Vikings right now, and he keeps on making them. Uh, MC just, well, a Viking flies in and sees the Void Rays, but MC is not making any Colossus. So these Vikings are actually just about useless. They are mm -hmm. not going to do almost anything. He has way too many. Uh, and that's a huge amount of supply, a huge amount of resources he's put in to these unupgraded, unneeded flying units. Yeah, and continuing to produce them as he moves forward to save uh, his bottom right base. That's a good point. MC has not gone uh, with the Colossi route. He's actually gone towards Psionic Storm as that research is about uh, three quarters complete. He warps in a few High Templar and begins his gateway explosion at the natural, dropping four more gateways, and now going to pull his army back on the, the other road of Metalopolis as he gets back to his gold base. His expansion well saturated, his new expansion at the top, and uh, let's take a look at the upgrades. 2-2 two, two for Thorzane, not yet continuing with 3-3. Three, three. I don't mind that. He wants to secure his third base, get control of it, get his uh, macro and supply up a little bit more before he goes for that 3-3. Three, three. Indeed. Uh, you know, I want to point out that right now, Viking-wise, it looks like he has 14. That's 28 useless supply against MC. He's going Immortal High Templar Speed Zealot Stalker against this, and uh, MC looks like he's in a pretty good spot, except for the upgrades. We're going to have to see how good are these upgrades, and he is going in. Nice force fields, nice guardian shields, but his Stalker is engaging parts of the army. They probably should not be. Up come some Psy Storms, and down go some Vikings. He's going to land them as ground wow. units, and even though he has 28 supply that wasn't used in that battle whatsoever until the very last second, he barrels through this army of MC because, well, MC does not have any upgrades. He is adding that fourth base, but Thorzane just walking across the map with his superior upgrades, and now superior army. Yeah, moving forward, looks like he wants to put on a little bit of pressure. He's got his Vikings. I'm wondering if he's going to land those. No, just going to take out the pylon as he continues towards the natural of MC. MC trying to bring, bring back a few units that were warped in the at the gold base of Thorzane. Thorzane rallying his entire force to bring forward and actually landing the Vikings as he stims and moves forward, trying to put the heat to OGS MC. MC doing not enough damage against the 2-2 upgrades of Thorzane, and the Vikings actually cleaning up from the back, dealing a lot of damage. Sion Storm is good, lands on the majority of the uh, Terran infantry, but it is just not enough. Thorzane crashing forward with landed Vikings into the natural of OGSMC and now with the Zealot streaming down on the ramp, completely isolated by those Vikings. OGSMC forced to GG and Thorzane goes up 2-0 in this best of five series. Oh my god, man. He's just like, seriously, 28 useless supply for most of that. Eventually, he felt some pity for MC and landed the Vikings. <laughs> He's like, hey, let me fight you with units that have no upgrades just like your units. But still, it was not enough. MC losing that game down 0-2 and... He better pray that Thorzane, uh, you know, falls down a set of stairs going to get a drink because I think that's about the only way that he's going to be able to take him out. Thorzane completely outplaying MC. I'm just so impressed with this young savant of StarCraft 2. Yeah, and some criticisms we had of Adele Scott specifically when we watched him was that his multitasking slipped. Thorzane is like the complete inverse player. When he's getting harassed by Void Rays, he's lifting his barracks and completing plus one before like 
commentators even notice that he's finishing eBay and he's upgrading. It's just insane to see how much he gets done and how quickly he gets those upgrades out. Very, very impressive guy. Oh, I know. He's he's doing stuff before we even notice it with our heart-shaped glasses on. Uh, it's <laughs> it's really it's so impressive, man. I, I actually cannot stress enough how impressed I am with Thorzane. I'm already trying to figure out the the cast Thorzane round of four <laughs> match. Uh, that's how confident I am in Thorzane at this point. Uh, the kid is a serious talent, and MC, I bet you right now, is in complete and utter shock. This is a guy that can take down the Terrans that used to be considered, you know, the best Terrans in the world. Now I think that that may have to go to Thorzane, though. Yeah, it's it's just ridiculous to see. So Thorzane is going to pack up his 2-0 lead and take it over to Zalnaga Caverns, our map for game number three. You know, this is a map that everyone knows, everyone studied. Thorzane has shown us dominant results on it before. So I think game number three, he's going to feel very comfortable uh, just taking this momentum lead to MC. And Artosis, with his silence, agrees with that statement because I know, I know just like I was like, like just hoping giant... you'd press go, man. I'm like, please, <laughs> I want it. I want to see Thorzane get 2-2 and kill MC again. <laughs> And uh, I guess with that being said, we don't want to delay the action here. Game number three going to be coming up between Thorzane and MC right after this. <laughs> 